Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Today, uh, good afternoon. How about my 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 voice? It's clear. Uh, today, uh, our our lab seminar have about four members starting with me. Okay, so uh, let let me start now. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, uh, I am. Uh, I'm. Uh, my name is Sakan Tengkel. I am a PhD student at KMUAT. Uh, under my advisor, Doctor Perin Chai Panya, and my professor, Professor Tukum Kam M. Today, uh, I would like to present our results under the topic "Mediatic uh, Challenges for a Sequence of Relationship Mapping in Hadamard Spaces" and its applications. Okay, in this presentation, uh, I divide the topic into four parts. The, the first part is introduction. In this in this part, uh, I will talk about the, the definition of uh, spaces, the definition of mapping, and some spatial condition for our work. Okay, the first, uh, I I have to talking about the the definition of geodesic space. Let X D be a metric space. A geodesic join X to Y is a mapping gamma from code interval zero to one to space X. Such that the uh, the gamma zero equal X. Okay, you will see that. It, uh, look, please look at the picture. The gamma uh, mapping zero to X and mapping one to Y, and this sand between any two point on this segment. Defined by uh, this sign x y times uh, absolute of t one minus t two for any t one and t two in this interval. Then the space x is said to be a uh, uniquely or geodesic metric spaces. Uh, sorry, geodesic metric space. If every two points of x are joined by a geodesic or unique geodesic, when this geodesic is unique. We can define uh, the geodesic x and y by uh, code interval x y. Okay, next one we call that the geodesic triangle with vertices x one x two x three in x. Denote the triangle x one x two x three is defined by a union of t segments and a combination triangle of geodesic triangle x one by x two by in x is a triangle x one sorry x one x two x three in x. Is a triangle x1 by x2 by x3 by in Euclidean, such that the distance between xi and xj equal to distance between xi by xj bar. Okay, please look at the, the left hand side picture. Uh, define the uh, this is a triangle x1, x2, x3 in, in space x. The combination triangle of this geodesic triangle is defined by a uh, triangle x1 by x2 by x3 by in Euclidean, like this. And a uh, uh, geodesic triangle in X is said to satisfy the Casio inequality if the following inequality holds for all X and Y in triangle in inequality. Okay, please look at the left hand side again. Uh, if we let X and Y is an uh, element on triangle X1, X2, X3, the distance between X and Y must be less than or equal to distance between. Uh, X one by X, uh, sorry, X bar and Y bar in combination triangle. Okay, a geodesic space X is called a Casio space if every two uh, every geodesic triangle in X satisfy Casio equality, and moreover, uh, complete Casio space is called Hadamard space. Okay, and next one is uh, some example of Hadamard space. The first one, Euclidean space. Uh, second one, Hilbert spaces, and the, the third one is hyperbolic spaces. The shape of hyperbolic is like this. And the next one is R3 space. Uh, the shape of R3 space is uh, something like this. It looks like a <laughs> union of a segment. Okay. And the last one is phylogenetic T spaces. This is a Space include the, the, the graph of uh, evolution of uh, any space 
any species of animal. Okay. And next, we will present uh, the definition of non offensive mapping. Let's add the and Hadamard space. A mapping T mapping from edge to edge is said to be non offensive mapping if distance between uh, Tx and Ty must be less than or equal to distance between X and Y. Following this inquiry, and okay, and next one we will give, give some examples of non offensive mapping on Hadamard spaces, uh, which is an uh, important tool for solving convex optimization problems, start, starting with uh, the metric position operator. This, this operator is an uh, important tool for solving uh, convex predictability problems okay, in Hadamard spaces. There's HDB and Hadamard space, and CB and non empty called convex subset of H. The metric projection operator uh, PC mapping from C onto set C is defined by uh, PCX equal to admin of uh, design XY for, for Y in C for all X in H. Uh, this, this operator is a non epic mapping following from a uh, referring one. And by definition of PC, we, we, we will see that, that the big part of PC is equal to set C. <coughs> and next, next, uh, Next example of non limited mapping is a resolvent operator. This lead operator is an important tool for solving convex optimization problems. For, for example, the minimization problem, some sum of several loss functions. Okay, and uh, let's add the, the and other participate and if mapping from H into the interval be a proper lower semi, uh, this is a lower semi continuous. Convex function, the Lisserand operator uh, lambda f uh, of f it, with respect to lambda uh, lambda greater than zero is defined by uh, uh, lambda f x equal to admin of f y plus one over two lambda distance x y squared. Okay, when 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 uh, y is belong to h for all x in h, this mapping is also non offensive mapping. Uh, following from reference two, and according to reference two, we know that the fixed point of this mapping is equal to admin of f. <laughs> okay, and the last one is a special condition uh, of subset, which is uh, we will add this this condition to to subset in our main results, uh, namely Q four bar condition. This condition is uh, uh, was introduced by Kakavandi in reference T. Okay, let's HDB uh, uh, capture space. Uh, then X is called satisfy Q4 bar condition if for uh, any four points A, B, C, D. Please look at the, the, the picture. Any four point A, B, C, D on space X. Okay, so that the, the distance between A and C less than or equal to this time between A and D, and this time between B and C less than or equal to this time between B and D. Then the, this, uh, if M is a point on J6 space A and B, the distance between uh, M and C must be less than or equal to this time between M and D also. And it is a, uh, for example, of uh, casual spaces, which is a uh, certified Q4 bar variation. The first is Hubert spaces, uh, RTs, and any casual space of constant curvature uh, also certified uh, Q4 bar variation. Uh, uh, for the meaning of constant curvature, I mean the, the, the space, which is uh, a above or and below by zero. <coughs> okay, next section is uh, mainly solved. Uh, the first, first hour mainly saw theorem 2.1. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's add JB and have other participants and T mapping, TN, B, not ABC mapping for all N. Support that uh, F uh, defined by the common fifth point of TN is non empty and the sequence of mapping TN uniform, uniformly converts to a mapping T on each non empty bounded subset of H. Then the following holds 
the first one is uh, uh, the the sequence of metric uh, metric projection p f x n converts strongly to some point in f and the second one if peak point t equal to f uh, and h satisfy q4 bar condition and for any x in h the sequence uh, x n and sigma n divided by x one equal to one and x n plus one equal to t n x n and sigma n x divided by argument of the this summation oh sorry uh, here is a one over n here okay for all n in n then the sequence sigma n x is delta convergent to some element c bar in fixed point t where c bar equal to limit of uh, P F X N. Okay. Okay. Uh, in this theorem, we 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 can call it uh, the main algebraic theorem for a sequence of non-repetitive mapping. Okay. Okay. By using our main results, previous main results, uh, when we define T N equal to T to mapping some non-repetitive mapping. So we will get the, the theorem 2.2, which is uh, the, the standard non defensive mapping was proved by uh, uh, Kati Sadeb and Baledi in reference 4. <coughs> okay. And next one, uh, the next, next results. From, from the first results, we have the condition of uniformly convert. Okay. With it, uh, this this condition is uh, maybe uh, difficult for for apply to convert optimization. So so we relax this condition to theorem two point three. Let S D be an Adamas space with Q four bar condition and S N be non expensive mapping for all n with the common point of S N is non empty. Let delta K be a, a sequence of Open it all zero to one, such that the summation of beta k equal to one. We divide x one equal to x in x and uh, t n c equal to admin of uh, uh, the summation k from one to n plus one uh, of lambda. Uh, sorry, alpha n k distance y s k c square and define sequence x n plus one by uh, t n x n for all n in n where the uh, the sequence alpha n k divided by uh, beta k if k greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to n and divided by one minus uh, the summation of beta k if k equal to n plus one and divide the sequence sigma n x uh, by argument of one over n summation distance y x k square then the sequence sigma n x is delta from convergent to some element in compact point of S n, which is also the strongly limit point of sequence p uh, mapping to the compact point of S n x n. Okay, you will see that uh, this this all is uh, uh, without the the condition of uh, uniformly convergent of S n because we we define uh, uh, the new the the mapping T T N C by using the H K and in in the proof we define uh, some mapping T which is the uniformly limit of this mapping again and we will get the result from by using the first power theorem. So by this theorem two point T we will get the the Next two query in section three. The first query by the in the same condition, we we let f be a mapping, uh, sorry, be a function proper lower semi continuous function, and let uh, lambda n f be a resolvent of f n for uh, with respect to lambda n for all n in n. And define beta k and alpha k same same as the previous theorems. Okay, we can get the correlative point one. 
when we define the sequential end like this and Tn C uh, by replacing uh, replacing the T sorry replacing Hkn by Lisuen of f, then the sequence of sigma and f is delta convergent to some element in admin f, which is also the strong limit point of sequence. Uh, this one, so we can use this quality to solve a minimization problem in NMS spaces. And the next quality, t point two, okay, same idea as a uh, previous quality when we replacing the uh, the mapping. SK by metric equations PCK, we will get the quality T point T point two. Okay, the sequence sigma and X is delta convergent to some element in uh, common uh, uh, iteration of C N. We did uh, also strongly limit point of sequence uh, this this sequence. So we can use this quality to solve a uh, convex fifty problem in other mass spaces. Okay, and finally, in section four, we will give some uh, uh, example to uh, for our first quality T point one. Okay, we will show some numerical of our algorithm. In this section, we implement the proposed algorithm in quality T point one to approximate the the Cauchy mean of uh, given data set A on RT space X. Okay. As I told uh, about the RT space, it's a casino certified Q4 bar condition in section one. And uh, okay, by please look at the left hand side picture. This, this picture, the, the blue line represents the, the uh, data set X, which is a RT space, and the right hand side picture, the, the, the Orange, orange point represent the uh, egg elements in that uh, in set A. <coughs> okay, and by using the quality one, we, we have to define the, the objective function f by the summation of i from one to x of this and x a i square. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. This. This function, this sign, this sign x and ai square is a strongly proper and lower semi continuous on Hadamard spaces. Okay, and by letting lambda n equal to 1 over 2 for all n and beta k equal to 1 over 2 power, power k for all k, uh, we can use the, the, the algorithm in quality t one to solve the, the uh, to minimize this function, which is the uh, the the culture mean of the data set A, and next next picture we will show the the convergent sequence of sigma and x one by using two distinct uh, distinct starting point x one in x. The first example we will let the starting point is here. Okay, and the the exact culture mean is uh is will, will be here. So the 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 sigma n sequence defined in algorithm quality t point one is uh, uh represented by the the mark green green mark. Okay, you will see that if this algorithm is a uh, convert to the exact cash mean like this with the uh, earlier function in left hand side picture. Okay, and next one we will. Uh, Show the this thing starting point, change it to to be here. And the algorithm uh, sigma x n is uh, also convert to the exact Cauchy mean, but in different different uh, different way with the the function earlier function in the left hand side. Okay, and thank you all. Or uh, you are interesting in uh, my work. Thank you very much, everyone. Or uh, it's you are interesting. Thank you for your nice presentation. Any question or suggestion?
Any question? Sakan, can you go to your first ergodic theorem? Oh, yes. Uh, okay, this is the uh, first. Okay, okay. Uh, in, in your results, first result is Pf of xn converts strongly to P. You have not defined xn. Ah, sorry, sorry, yes. Thank you very much. Yes, so I have to define again first. You have to modify this theorem because we don't thank you know this. Yes, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, uh, it's a uh, same same definition of again. Uh, I have to change it uh, above before the the conclusion one. Thank you very much, Professor. And one more comment is that you, I think you read too much from the slides. Mm, yes. Maybe you have to prepare more. Thank you very much. I will uh, prepare and improve my presentation. Thank you very much. Ajahn. Okay. Okay, if no, any question? Thank you, Stan. Oh, okay, thank you very much again for okay. uh, comment from Ajahn Brain. <laughs> I will improve that. And everyone, see you. Okay, can you stop your screen? Okay. Okay, everyone, can you see my slide? Yes, you can see. Okay, next presenter is uh, me. So I want to introduce myself. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Aurela uh, Tipan. My advisor is Dr. Pauline Chaipanya, and my co-advisor is Professor Dr. Phuong Kampin. Today, I would like to present the topic, Utility Network Optimization in Equal, uh, in, in equal Industrial Park by uh, the Little Follower Game Methodology. So today we have a full content. In the first is the definition, motivation, and the real constant of the multi leader follower game. And uh, I want to present the, uh, the what is the equal industrial park. And the next section is the medical, mathematical modeling. And the third is the case study. And the final part is the future work. So uh, we start from the first part. We want to show you for the definition of the multi leader follower optimization problem. So in this definition, <clears throat> a multi leader follower optimization is a problem consists of uh, minimizing a uh, uh, top player. We want to uh, you can call a leader and a bottom player you can call a follower by uh, setting x uh, defined by uh, uh, x defined by the by this and y defined by this where x i and y j they are the decision space of a uh, a leader and follower player. And next, we want to define the cost function f i and g i from x times y to the to uh, and the constant c i belong uh, it a subset x d j it a subset y. Given x equal to this and y equal to this, 
So for if i equal 1 to n, we want to the minimize the cost function fi of xy and uh, such that xi belong to ci for and y solve the problem px. What is a problem px? For if j equal 1 to n, the problem px divided by the minimize uh, the cost function gj of xy such that yj belong to the dj. So we want to come back to here. Uh, the mean is is uh is not well defined. So if the the px have more than one solution, so then uh we need to x the perspective from here. We can you can setting the mean equal to mean x and mean y. In the case of optimistic approach, the next is the uh, pessimistic. So you setting the follower is a max of solution of follower, right? And the next is the average approach is defined by this. It, uh, you use the average of the solution of the follower. Right, and if in the uh, we want to show you for the case of the multi leader follower optimization. So, if m equal to zero, uh, the problem uh, of the definition 1.1 is the core net equilibrium. So, what is the net equilibrium defined by this? Uh, consider for uh, n player where is player i minimizes the cost function if i from x to r, a vector x star is uh, equal to x i star and x minus i star. x minus i is uh, mean that the strategy without, without the strategy uh, of the player i is called a net equilibrium of this game. If for any x uh, minus i star we have, the cost function f i of x i star x and x minus i star less than or equal to the cost function of the x i and x minus i star for all x i belong to the strategy space of player i. So in another case, is for n equal to one, we call that uh, the single leader and the uh, and multi follower. So if m equal to one, we call that the multi leader and single follower. So in the, another case, if we have m equal to one, m equal to one, we call that a single leader and single follower. So, and you can call a bi-level optimization. We want to show you for the example of the, in the case of the uh, single leader, single follower. So let's FG define by this. Uh, the function f equal to x plus y and function g divided by y minus 2x squared. So you can so you say you you know that right the consensus c equal to positive real number and the constant consensus d equal to the real value. <clears throat> so we can so you can pick x right from here and find the solution from g and come back to the top and for send back for the leader. So next we want to show you for the what is the equal in the trail park. The equal in the two part is a concept in the modeling the problem in a bi-level program according the concept of a game theory. And the problem of the EIP meaning the concept uh, leader follower game where each participant has their own decision variable and antagonistic objective function. Yeah, so you are uh, the EIP is have uh 
many many uh, enterprise for con conclude uh, and each enterprise have have the have the objective function of of them and we have a big big uh, eip for is uh, for setting a uh, 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 and we have an EIP is one to minimize the one to quality, one to the recycling and saving energy and the, the so. Uh, for this, uh, for this work, the objective is the one to propose the concept of the EIP approach, and next one to formulate the single leader follower. And for now, for today, we show you the formula of the single letter multi follower game and multi letter single follower game model. So, and the last part is we want to show you for the some example. In this example, use the study the case of the uh from the EIP on in the Norway. Next, uh, we in the path of mathematical modeling. So we show you for the picture for the general view of the support structure for the utility network problem. You can see right in the left hand side is the utility for input the process unit and come out for splitter to discharge and to other process unit. Okay. We setting P is the P is the uh, index set of the process of the enterprise. We setting EP is the index set of the enterprise. So and U is the index index set of the utility and RUT is the uh, required utility of the process P. And GUT is the generate utility of the process P of enterprise EP. Okay. And next, uh, we setting the constraint of the model. The first is we setting the utility math balance around process unit P of the enterprise EP uh, require utility you belong to the require unit uh, require utility of uh, process P of the enterprise EP right in this the equation 4 is the you can I will come back for in this picture define from here the place sum of place utility of uh, all the process this of, of, of the process when this uh come in right so equal to the equal to the 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 when when the utility come out in the right hand side in this the meaning of the equation four so in the next of the Utility uh, requirement around the process P of the enterprise EP. Uh, define from here, equation 5, right? We come back for my picture. In the sum of the utility in the, of, of the utility on the right hand side, equal the uh, equal the in the this process unit in the right hand side and in the middle is this equal right in this the meaning of the education five so we uh make sure the uh ep and p not equal ev palm and p palm so next the flow positivity the utility of phase utility is uh make sure the less than uh, greater than or equal to, uh, to zero and uh, in the same the utility of 
other uh, of other process is greater than or equal to zero and the utility of the process greater than or equal to zero. So next, uh, the objective function are in UI into namely the environmental objective function of uh, defined by the equation nine from here, where rho u represent the uh, carbon dioxide emission rate of the yeast utility u. Right, and next we want to define the objective function of yeast one of the enterprise. That's yeast, uh, AWH uh, stand for uh, annual enterprise operating hour. Right, and alpha stands for the purchase price of rate utility and beta for the cost of pumping a uh, recycle utility from one process to another. And you can see in this term, beta over to right because the, the, the cost of the pumping is the have a have a to to enterprise help uh for pay so so one enterprise is pay half and and another one enterprise is pay half so we have a cost is uh over two so in the next we show you for the enterprise uh for the standalone model so minimize the the total of the enterprise EP. Such that uh, from equation 4 to equation S, it uh, whole and the utility of the process. Uh, and this in this in this in this line is for sure that the uh, uh, for sure that the utility of process EP and process EP part is not equal. So we next, we want to show you for the multi-leader single follow game and single leader multi follow game optimize. So first we setting a UF certified by here, certified by this and UPEP certified by this and less than or equal this. Oh, so sorry. Is I think is I mistake, I mistake. Say sorry. I this here is from uh and from here from here to here. Okay, up uh equal to this to this right and do this equal to to this. So next testing the dxy equal the equation six and equation eight. And LEP of the X, Y EP, and Y minus EP equal to the equation four and equation five. Define NEP of Y EP and Y minus EP equal to equation seven. So first, the single leader multi follower game optimize this certify the equation fifteen. So minimize the the Leader. Leader is the objective function of the this sorry, I think it's uh this equation 15 in here. So sorry, I mistake. Uh these are leader. Leader is the EIP and the follower is the in all of all of enterprise is the follower. <coughs> So the first is single leader. We setting the EIP is the leader. We setting the all of uh, enterprise is the follower. And you can see in the picture here, EIP is want to minimize the carbon dioxide, right? And uh, why the is enterprise want to minimize the cost of the cost of them. <clears throat> 
So in the next is monthly leader single follower we script uh, we uh, we we change right we setting the leader is the all of enterprise and the follower is the EIP. So you can see in this picture in here. So we show you for the case study of the of the two 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 model. Show this uh potential EIP participating in the pride. So we we setting this uh COGAT is carbon dioxide capture and MEOH and DME of the synesthetic and the refinery power plant and air separation. In this, all of this is the is the is the process of the enterprise. So the result of enterprise is operating by themselves. You can see the total in here. The fed utility consumption is uh maybe uh eight eighty did right eighty thousand and carbon dioxide is one hundred fifty seven point nine eight right and when use formulate the formulate the data for for the so by the multi-liter single follower uh you get that the total is in here and the co2 is equal 92 for in uh you can see it in the uh decrease uh, decrease more than the generate by uh, uh decrease more than the by themselves this generate a uh, decrease more than the generated by themselves and in in another case is a single leader multi follower is uh equal to here so in two case multi leader single follower game and single leader multi follower game cannot cannot uh clear for tell you for single leader multi follower is better than multi leader follower or multi follower single or multi follower single leader is better than uh multi leader single follower is cannot 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 clear so you you can use you can try to use uh two model for get the for get the solution and you can you can use if you want to you can you can try to use of two model so so my future works uh, I interest the on the on the that uh, in the case of the water integration in equal industrial parks uh, and in the case of for first we want to start from the single leader multi follower approach so in here satisfied by this this uh this model in this picture that right so this is my reference thank you for your attention Okay, any question or suggestion? No, any question? <laughs> Can you suggestion something for me? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for the nice presentation. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, the presentation is quite good, honestly. And maybe what you need to improve is uh, the, uh, the slides. Maybe you have to maybe recheck some of the typos before you start. Sometimes it's 
Yeah, there are some like mistakes in terms of uh, notations and something like that. But I think everything is okay. You did quite ah, well. Okay. Uh, can you go to the future? Can you go to the future? Future world, right? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's so sorry. The picture is not not clear. Right? <laughs> oh, so so yeah. so you wish to to consider another case study, right? Yeah, yeah. In the water integration. Water integration. Yeah. In okay. but in 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 the works of uh upper I present right. Consider okay. all of the the air and for the yeah 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 it's a role yes, a role problem yeah. of think, people park yes, yeah yeah yes, so yes. i interest, yeah you you can see in this in the right hand side right we have a two mixer for input here and yes. uh, we have a mixer in in the process in the middle yeah, of the process yeah, yes. yeah, yeah and we want to we have a contaminate is contaminant yes. yeah contaminant. Contaminant. for consider Okay. So in my <laughs> my so, work, so, so so your target is to model this kind of scenario and try to solve it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For uh, now, I start from solve. single leader multiple. Yeah, yeah. This oh. maybe next we want to have have more than the have more the in the regeneration unit. Add more the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I think it's a very good idea. Uh, good luck with your work. Bye -bye. Okay, thank you so much. Great. Any question or suggestion? Okay, if no question, uh, we stop share screen and next presenter is Mr. Dolat, right? Yes. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, if you're ready, you can share your screen and start. Thank you. Uh, can you hear? Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. Okay. Okay. Um, today's topic is uh, the analysis of by generalizing probability generation of cases of nanofluid with inclined magnetic field, and this is me, Mr. Dolat Khan. Under the current supervision of Professor Ivan Sokwatayo and the co supervision of Professor Pom Kumam. Uh, this is the layout of my presentation. First of all, I will um, have some introduction, which is the basic for my uh, uh, presentation. And after that, we have some mathematical results. And then we, uh, I study, uh, I will present the graphical result. and. Lot, uh, second or last, I will present the conclusion of the uh, present work. And the last, I have some future suggestions. Uh, starting from the very beginning, that is fluid. Uh, fluid actually is a uh, material that has no fixed shape and it should easily deform under uh, any applied stress. stress, stress. Uh, and then we have two type of fluid that one Newtonian and non Newtonian uh, on the basis of Newton law of viscosity. Those fluids which obey Newton law of viscosity are known as Newtonian and which do not obey the Newton law of viscosity are known as non Newtonian. In non Newtonian fluid, we have many type of fluid, but I, uh, in my presentation, I take case of fluid as my study. So we must know about the case of fluid. Uh, case in uh, fluid first was presented by uh, Kaysen in 1959. And actually the model was originally developed to describe the flow behavior of printing ink, but he has since uh, been applied to the wide range of neon Newtonian fluid. And he defined uh, a case in fluid definition as a shear thinning liquid, which is Assume have uh, which is assumed to have an infinite viscosity at zero rate of shear, higher stress below which no flow occur, and a zero viscosity at an infinite rate of shear. And these are some example of uh, case in fluid uh, that is jelly and tomato sauce and honey. Uh, 
also I take the heat transfer in my studies in the master board. Uh, these are the uh, main three types of heat transfer that is convection, conduction, and radiation, which are uh, very familiar in the literature. Uh, Magnetohydrodynamics is also present in my studies. We must know about this. Uh, Magnetohydrodynamics actually the study of magnetic properties and behavior of electrically conducting fluid. The effect of so this effect was first initiated by Hennes Elfen, and for this work, he received a Nobel Prize in 1970. And MHD is applied in many applications in daily life uh, application. Uh, we have some application like magnetic therapy, MRI, and magnetic hypothermia, and so on. Um, we have a nanofluid, so uh, we must know about this. Uh, initially, Maxwell tried to put some uh, particle in a base fluid and uh, he created a macro fluid. But, uh, this, uh, 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 but this but uh, this is uh, not working because uh, due to segmentation, collision and blockage of the narrow channel. And after that, in 1995, try uh, present uh, uh, an experiment in Argonne National Laboratory, USA, and he uh, makes a nanometer size particle in a base fluid. And this result can be known as a Newton uh, nanofluid. And this is actually the uh, uh, preparation of method of nanofluid when we insert some nanoparticle in a base fluid. And after some uh, scientific method, we can mix these two things and we finally get the nanofluids. Uh, these are the application of nanofluids. So nowadays, nanofluids have a lot of application that can be used in renewable energy system, vehicle, cooling of uh, electronic device, refrigerating system, heating, cooling, uh, and power pens. Entropy. I also take the entropy of this, this so, uh, problem. So the entropy concept was first introduced by Rod Clausius in the 1850s during his studies on the uh, thermodynamics of heat engine. Uh, and he defined entropy as a state function that describes the amount of energy in a system that is unvaluable for doing useful work. And this concept of entropy has then since applied in many fields of science, including chemistry, information theory, and cosmology. Uh, entropy is expressed as the unit of energy per unit temperature, such as joule per kilowatt or calories per degree Celsius. Uh, the change in entropy of system is related to the heat transfer that occur during a physical or chemical process. And mathematically, we can say del S is equal to Q by T. Actually, del S is the change of entropy and Q represents the heat transfer and T is the absolute temperature. The concept of entropy provides deep insight into the direction of spontaneous change for many already phenomena. We can apply this phenomena in uh, every, many everyday phenomena which have uh, the word uh, change. Uh, now entropy generation. Um, in thermodynamic system, entropy generation refers to the amount of entropy created during irreversible process such as heat flow, fluid flow, diffusion, dual heating, friction, and viscosity. According to the second law of thermodynamics, the total entropy of system remain unchanged during uh, irreversible irreverse, uh, process. While the complex system undergoing irre irreversible change in flow and heat transfer process cannot be returned to their initial state, resulting in energy loss. And this is energy loss increase the entropy in their system. And after that, Bijan showed that entropy production is a useful tool to study the effect of irreversibility in a system. And the entropy production can help to minimize energy loss in a system. Uh, this is the main differences between entropy and entropy generation. Uh, entropy actually measures uh, the degree of uh, disorder in a given system, but entropy generation measures of increase uh, 
in entropy due to irreversible or inefficient process. And entropy represents amount of thermal energy that cannot be converted into useful energy. While in other hand, entropy generation represents amount of energy lost or dissipate during a process. Um, entropy describes the state of a system, while in other hand, the entropy generation describes the process by which the system changes from one state to another state. Uh, entropy actually, the property of a system is self, while the entropy generation is the property of the process that drives the system. Uh, entropy change of uh, reversible process is zero, while the entropy generation change of any reverse process is uh, always positive. These are the main applications that entropy is used in many daily life applications. That is thermal engineering in entropy can be used in energy production, heat process, extrusion process, cooling of devices, and lubrication phenomena. Uh, for the statistical analysis, I use the uh, regression. So we must know about the regression. A regression actually refer to a statistical method used to examine the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variable. The goal of regression analysis is to determine the strength and nature of the relation between the variable as well as to predict the value of the dependent variable based on the values of uh, the independent variable. This is the mathematical form of uh, regression that y is actually dependent variable. Beta is the population y-intercept and beta one is actually population slope coefficient and xi is an uh, independent variable. Here xi represent the many independent variable and similarly yi represented are uh, dependent for many dependent variable and er is uh, the random error this is the uh, types of regression in many types of regression but some of them are as follows this is the useful application of regression that regression phenomena can be used to predictive modeling risk assessment quality control processing optimization, marketing research, medical research, social science research, environment analysis, economic forecasting, and engineering design, signal processing, image processing, and so on. Uh, I present the model to uh, by applying the different uh, fractional operators to make our model and uh, more realistic and generalized. So we must have some knowledge about the fractional calculus. Actually, the fractional calculus uh, was born in 1695 when Leibniz wrote a letter to his hospital that what will happen when the uh, order of a derivative is uh, in fractional, that is one by two or uh, anyone. So this is uh, the born of fractional calculus. Uh, after that attempt, uh, many researchers find the definition and uh, uh, the most uh, common in literature are as follows. In 1867, Gorge uh, defined a Ryman Levilleu fractional derivative. And after that, many researchers work on this and Caputo, Michael Caputo in 1965 present Caputo fractional derivative which is a uh, very famous up to now and 2006 uh, uh, Anatoly uh, present the cardinal proportional Caputo fractional derivative and uh, recently in 2014 the Michael Caputo and Fabrizio present a new definition uh, that is Caputo Fabrizio fractional derivative but most recently Atangana Bellino, Atangana and Bellino present uh, the definition of a, a fractional derivative and which is known as a Atangana Bellino fractional derivative and which is uh, used in many field of uh, uh, science uh, in engineering and mathematicians.
Uh, now, why we use the fractional derivative? So actually, fractional calculus is able to show memory effect of physical phenomena. And uh, the result obtained from this fractional model, or we say that this generalized model are more reliable and more realistic as compared to the classical one in which we have just only one result. Term. And more exactly by adjusting the fractional parameter, the obtained result can be compared with experimental data for more and excellent agreement. Uh, this one is the research methodology which I adopt for my this problem. First of all, we propose the mathematical problem in which we have the governing equation with uh, governing equation is uh, the combination with energy and velocity equation, and they have initial boundary conditions. After that, we use the non-dimensional variable to make our system non-dimensional, and this process non-dimensional analysis. Uh, uh, and which uh, after that we get a non-dimensional system. After that we apply the fractional operator and which make the classical model to the or to more generalized model. And then we apply the Laplace transform which convert PDS to ODE and uh, we take the solution. And after that we take uh, apply the inverse Laplace transform and we get the final solution in the form of uh, temperature and velocity profile to study the uh, different parameter on the uh, different parameter effect on temperature and velocity profile. We have a graphical representation of their parameters. Uh, this is the literature review which I uh, study for this problem. Uh, this is the uh, physical geometry of the model. Uh, the uh, x x is actually this represent the plate of uh, uh, and 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 this one is the fluid. Uh, and the fluid is consists of momentum boundary and the thermal boundary. And initially, uh, the velocity of the plate is zero, while the temperature of the plate is this one. When away from the plate is. Uh, uh, Away from the plate, the velocity is also zero, but away from the plate, the temperature is the ambient temperature, the, the temperature of the surrounding. And the fluid are taking case and then fluid. While the magnetic field is perpendicular, sorry, the magnetic field is applied with an angle of gamma. Just in line, it means that the magnetic field is applied in with and inclination angle. Um, equation one represent the momentum equation on the basis of the previous geometry. Equation two represent the energy equation and we have the uh, initial boundary condition in equation number three, which I already defined in the previous geometry. Uh, these are the properties of nanofluid. As I take the model and which I have take a base fluid, uh, as a case and fluid, and we have some nanoparticles. So for this purpose, I use uh, NF. NF actually represents the nanofluid. Uh, so these are the properties of nanofluid, uh, which is used in the calculation. Uh, this one is the dimensionless variable, which I use for non-dimensionalization. And during non-dimensionalization, we get the non-dimensional parameter Gravitational number, magnetic parameter, and Prandtl number. And after non-dimensionalization, we have uh, equation number four, the dimensionless form of momentum equation. Equation number five is the dimensionless form of energy equation. And equation number six is the dimensionless form of uh, initial boundary condition. Uh, and these are some constants which we get, uh, which I get in during the calculation. Okay. Now I use uh, I apply the two different fractional operators. So first I use the constant proportional computer fractional derivative uh, to make our system more generalized. Uh, we say that the generalized model. So this is the uh, I apply the uh, CPC operator on energy equation and momentum equation, where CPC is actually uh, the uh, derivative of a constant proportional definition of constant proportional Caputo fractional derivative and it's defined in equation number nine. 
Applying the Laplace transform of equation 7 and 8, we get uh, equation number 10 and 11. And after some calculation, we have the final solution uh, in the form of 12 and 13. Uh, after that, we need to find uh, to apply the inverse Laplace transform. But uh, uh, due to uh, com complexity, we cannot apply the, uh, exactly the inverse Laplace transform. So for this purpose, I used to uh, the numerical inversion of the class transform. Mm -hmm. uh, now I apply the Atangana Bellino fractional derivative to the system, and the system become uh, generalized by applying the Atangana Bellino fractional derivative, where a b where the Atangana Bellino fractional derivative is defined as in equation number sixteen. Uh, and applying the Laplace transform and after some calculation, we get equation number 17 and 18. And the same case is here that we cannot find the exactly uh, the inverse Laplace transform of the following equation. So we apply the uh, numerical inverse Laplace transform. Now entropy generation. This is actually the entropy generation equation that uh, uh, entropy generation uh, actually refer to the uh, total entropy is equal to the entropy due to heat transfer plus entropy due to magnetic field and plus entropy due to the fluid fraction. And uh, these are the mathematical form of entropy due to heat transfer and the entropy due to ma uh, magnetic field. And this is the mathematical form of entropy due to the fluid fraction. And these are some uh, constant in this one where uh, it is known as uh, the temperature difference and Brinkman number. And after that, the Bijan number is defined as the total entro uh, the entropy uh, due to heat transfer by total entropy generation. And the Bijan number has a strong reputation for providing a concept that is impacted by fluid fraction and magnetic field control over heat transmission. Uh, now graphical discussion. Uh, the first graph is actually the Outcome uh, outcome of case and fluid parameter on fluid velocity entropy generation Bijan number when we increase uh, the uh, <clears throat> a value of uh, a case and fluid parameter it uh, uh, it uh, decreases uh, the viscosity of the fluid as a result uh, the uh, velocity of the fluid is enhanced uh, and which enhance the entropy generation and each which Cause the retardation of a Bijan number. Uh, this is the uh, volume fraction of nano fluid. When we increase the volume fraction of nano particle, it retards the um, uh, fluid velocity, and as a result, the entropy and Bijan number is uh, the entropy is uh, decreasing while the Bijan number is decreasing, increase, and the entropy is uh, uh, decreasing. This is the fractional parameter uh, alpha uh, effect on the temperature profile, velocity profile, and entropy and Bijan number. And by we can see that by taking different value of fractional parameter alpha, we can get the different solution of uh, fluid temperature, fluid velocity, entropy, and Bijan number. It means that uh, um, the uh, variation of fractional parameter uh, parameter alpha uh, generalize the concept of fluid temperature and fluid velocity entropy in Bijan number. Uh, this is the outcome of angle of inclination of uh, magnetic field on fluid velocity and entropy and in Bijan number. The, when we increase the uh, angle of uh, magnetic parameter, it retards the fluid velocity. And as a result, the entropy is the retard and the Bijan number is enhanced. Uh, Gracious number outcome on fluid velocity, entropy generation, and Bijan number. Gracious number is actually to be uh, represented by buoyancy forces. When we increase uh, uh, the Gracious number, it enhances the buoyancy force and it enhances the fluid velocity. As a result, the entropy generation can be enhanced and uh, a retardation can be seen in the Bijan number. Uh, this is the comparison plot uh, uh, in case of uh, 
um, realistic. So we can see that uh, in all four cases for fluid velocity, fluid temperature, entropy, and in the John number, the CPC operator has more realistic feature as compared to the Atangana Berlin. But uh, I also uh, do some statistical analysis on the of the fractional both fractional operator on the fluid velocity and uh, entropy generation so in this graph we can see that uh, uh, this one is the variation of a tangana bellino fractional derivative and this is the variation of a, a proportional caputo hyper fractional derivative through regression uh, analysis so we can see that uh, atangana bellino is uh, uh, more uh, near to the predictive uh, fluid velocity while in case of proportional uh put hybrid derivative operator it have more spaces so we can say that uh, atangana bellino fractional operator is more statistically significant as compared to the cpc fractional operator um, and similarly for entropy generation we can see that uh, the Atangana Berlin fractional operator uh, is uh, uh, near to the predictive entropy uh, generation, while the CPC fractional operator is away from the predictive entropy generation uh, through regression uh, analysis. So we can say that uh, Atangana Berlino is more uh, statistically significant uh, uh, in case of entropy as well as compared to the CPC operator. Uh, this is the uh, calculation due to, uh, for the regression analysis. We can see that uh, the Atangana Berlino fractional operator uh, p value for the fluid velocity and p value for the entropy generation, and it is very low. That is, uh, uh, actually, uh, usually we can take 0 0.05 or 0 0.01, but in both cases, uh, uh, the value is uh, uh, very low from the 0 0.01. So we can say that uh, this is uh, 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 Atangana Berlino fraction operator is uh, statistically more significant. And similarly, CPCF uh, fractional operator have also uh, a low value from the 0 0.01, which is low from 0 0.01. So in this case, we also say that the CPC F fractional operator is also statistically significant uh, uh, for fluid and entropy in both cases. Uh, these are the main findings. The actually the fluid velocity amplifies uh, with enhanced buoyancy forces and viscosity force parameter, while fractional parameter volume fractional of nano fluid and inclination angle decreases. Entropy generation increases is traceable to the magnitude of case of parameter, thermal glacier, and Brinkman number with a decreasing impact of fractional parameter, volume fraction of inner fluid, and temperature difference. Uh, inclination angle, volume fractional of nanofluid fluid, and temperature difference augment, while the magnitude uh, of case of parameter, thermal glacier, and Brinkman number decline against the John number. Both fractional operators are statistically significant uh, for velocity and entropy generation, and the both fractional models provide a realistic study for curve fitting with experimental ester. And a Tangana Berlin fractional derivative is more statistically significant as compared to the CPCF derivative. And but in case of uh, memory effects, so uh, um, in case of more realistic phenomena, we can say that CPCF uh, derivative is more uh, realistic or more uh, realistic as compared to a Tangana volume fractional derivative. These are some future suggestions that this phenomena can be used uh, um, with the cylindrical coordinate. That's mean we can use for the cylindrical study. We can use for the uh, many types of fluid, many types of nanoparticle, and by incorporating the fractional calculus with chemical reaction 
and concentration equation uh, for many hybrid and fruit can be extended. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any question, comments, or suggestion, you are all welcome. So, thank you very much, everybody. Do you have any question? Okay, if we have no any question, we will go to the next presenter. The next one is Solomon. Yes. Yes, if you're ready, please share screen. So shall I start? Yes, please. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Solomon Zabajordis. I'm a first year uh, uh, PhD uh, student at the Department of Mathematics, Faculty of Science, KMUTT. Uh, today I will present a topic uh, on solving a split common uh, null point problem using hybrid projection method with proximity point algorithm uh, in liberal space. Actually, this is not my own work. Uh, I have actually I have many uh, research papers uh, published, uh, but I want to pursue a uh, new uh, research di direction uh, in Hilbert space because of its diverse uh, and important, very important applications. So for this reason, uh, I'm just uh, trying to read different materials on this area and uh, read different research articles. So for now, uh, I just present a paper which interests me, and I will. Uh, try to indicate how I'm, I'm going to I plan to uh, extend uh, the work. And I, I will also need your uh, your ideas, suggestions on this, uh, this uh, area. So this is a presentation outline, uh, introduction, uh, preliminaries, and uh, uh, main result. So as an introduction, uh, before I try to uh, discuss about the uh, split uh, fixed uh, uh, Point problem or uh, the uh, split uh, common null point problem. Uh, I have to mention about the uh, about the uh, split convex feasibility problem. So, split convex uh, feasibility problem is nothing but if when you have two uh, uh, non MPT closed convex subsets uh, C and Q for the Hilbert space H1 and a mapping a bound linear operator uh, T from H1 to H2. Then the split convex feasibility problem is formulated uh, as follows. Find an element X star element of S, which is equal to C intersection T inverse of uh, Q, which means the split convex feasibility problem uh, requires finding a point closest, closest, uh, closest to a closed convex set C in H1 such that, such that its image under T uh, will be closest to another closed set Q in the uh, image space. So this, this concept was first introduced by uh, sensor and Elving uh, for modeling certain inverse uh, problems. Uh, so, and it has, it plays an important role in medical image uh, uh, reconstruction and in signal processing. Uh, when you say medical image reconstruction, it is a process of uh, obtaining high quality uh, medical images for clinical use at a lower cost and risk of, of a patient. And when we say signal processing, it is a process of transform, transforming or converting data in a way that allows us to see things in it that are not possible via direct observation. And we know that many of these, these are some of the application areas that uh, can be modeled using a vector optimization uh, problem. And the problem of finding a solution to a convex optimization problem is equivalent to finding a fixed point of an algorithm operator. So, so this uh, 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 split convex uh, uh, feasibility problem has uh, an application in these uh, areas. And after that, several iterative algorithms are uh, 
uh, are uh, extended and, and generalized. Uh, some of the generalization of the split convex feasibility problems uh, are, for example, multiple set uh, split feasibility problem, the split common fixed point problem, the split variational inequality problem, and the split common null, null point problem. So by varying the sets of two sets in the queue to uh, considering a finite family of uh, non empty closed convex subsets, we can extend the split convex feasibility problem into a multiple set uh, split feasibility problem. And we can also think of a finite family of operators. And so in that case, we can discuss about a split common fixed point uh, problem. And if our problem uh, is about uh, variational inequality, then the uh, problem will be split variational inequality uh, problem. And the popular method for solving this uh, split convex feasibility problem is a uh, Byron's TQ algorithm, which is shown by equation uh, two, where the uh, uh, step size T is bounded between zero and uh, two over norm of T squared. So it's dependent on the uh, operator norm and IH1 and IH2 denote the identity operators on H1 and H2 respectively. And uh, PH1C and PH2Q are the metric projections of H1 onto C and of H2 onto Q uh, respectively. So these six algorithms have been extended uh, by many uh, uh, authors uh, to, for example, multiple set split convex uh, uh, problem. And this is uh, uh, the uh, important proposition of the K proposal they use is uh, given by uh, equation three. Uh, so using this, they have proved, uh, uh, they have extended the CQ algorithm uh, to various uh, uh, feasibility problems like multiple set split convex feasibility uh, problem. And the other uh, area, uh, extension area is uh, about the split uh, common null uh, point problem, uh, uh, which is formulated uh, by given two uh, monotone operators, A and B, uh, which are set valued uh, operators. And we have a T, which is a bounded linear operator. So the problem is to find a point X star element of A such that S is equal to A inverse of zero intersection, T inverse of uh, B inverse of zero, which is different from uh, implicit, of course. So this uh, problem uh, is recently studied by many authors. Uh, but the uh, and the key property uh, they use in, to, to prove their theorem is uh, the one which, which is shown here, the equation which is uh, shown here. So they use uh, a variant of the previous uh, pro problem, which was uh, uh, given in equation three. Here it was in terms of the projection from H to Q, but here in terms of the resolvent operator. And they have also give, uh, give uh, assumptions regarding the norm of T, alpha and beta uh, are imposed. Uh, and in, in recent uh, years, there are several uh, authors, uh, they, they study the modification of CQ iterated uh, iter method, where the step size does not depend on the norm of the operator. The previous uh, workers, uh, they, uh, the step size is dependent on the uh, operator norm, so it has a computational computational cost because at each step uh, we need to uh, compute the operator operator norm. Therefore, uh, in order to uh, solve this problem, many researchers have developed algorithms in which their method does not depend on the norm of the operator. So in this in this paper, uh, what they did is they combined the proximal point algorithm and the hybrid projection method in order to present a new iterative uh, method uh, for solving the split common null uh, point problem in Hilbert space. And using this method, they remove the assumption imposed on norm of T, alpha and beta, and they do not use the uh, variant of the K property three. So they use the original uh, uh, proposition, which is given uh, in equation three. Uh, so these are some of the uh, preliminary uh, uh, concepts or ideas. Uh, the first one is about the uh, projection operator, which is the nearest point. Uh, it shows it is in the, the nearest point. That means uh, if you have a non uh, close and convex uh, subset C of a Hilbert space H, 
we know that for each x element of h, there is a unit point uh, p h c of x, which is a projection of the point x from the face silver space h onto the uh, closed non infinity closed convex subset c of h, uh, such that this equation for uh, all this. And we have also another very important uh, characterization of the matrix projection, which is given in equation uh, five. We know the definition of non expansive. Uh, which is, and we uh, know also the uh, definition for fixed point of C, which is a set of all X elements of C such that KX equal to uh, X. Uh, the other is uh, we, can, we can talk about inverse uh, domain range uh, and graph of an operator, which is a, a simple concept. And uh, we have monotone, the definition of monotone uh, to say uh, given operator A is a monotone operator. Uh, if for each x, y element of B of A, we have the inner product of U minus B, comma X minus Y is equal to zero. For all U element of A of X and V element of A, Y. That's a very important uh, definition is about uh, the result one operator, which is given uh, uh, below. And uh, the important idea, which is also used in this, uh, the proof of the, the theorem is A inverse of zero is the same as fixed point of uh, uh, the uh, resolvent operator J. Therefore, we can we can uh, uh, apply the the definition of the resolvent operator to show that these two things are equal. And this is also another very important uh, lemma which is used to uh, prove the theorem, uh, where we have H uh, a real Hilbert space and C a non empty clause and convex subset of H. Then for all X element of H and Y element of C, we have this condition is satisfied. X minus the projection of X from uh, the Hilbert square H to C square plus norm of Y minus the projection of X from H to C square is less or equal to norm of X minus Y square. This is a very important uh, uh, inequality that we are, we are going to use in the, in the proof of the theorem. This was, another, this was another very important lemma where we have uh, uh, a sequence a, a, x a, uh, h if the condition uh, x n converges weakly to x and the norm of x n converges strongly to norm of x as n equals to infinity. This shows that x converges strongly to x. And the second is if x converges weakly to x as n goes to infinity, then the norm of x is always less or equal to the limb inf of the norm of x n as n goes to uh, infinity. And this is also another very important uh, property, lemma 2.3 and also lemma 2.4. Uh, and we have also uh, this important lemma, which is about demi closedness. Let T be a non expansive self mapping of a closed and convex subset C of inverse space H. Then the mapping I minus T is demi closed. Uh, that means whenever we have a sequence Xn in a, uh, a second Xn in C, which weakly converge to some x element of C, then the sequence i minus t x n converges if it converges strongly to y. Then it follows that i minus t of x uh, is equal to uh, y. Now, when you come to the main result, uh, we have this is the main the definition of the uh, split uh, uh, common null point uh, uh, problem, which is given by equation six. Uh, so this is the algorithm they developed by combining the uh, proximal algorithm and the hybrid uh, projection method. Yn is given uh, here, Zn, uh, Cn, Cn, and Cn, Dn, and Wn. Actually, Cn, Dn, Wn are uh, a characterization of the metric uh, projection. And Xn plus one is it is uh, it is a projection of x naught from h1 to Cn intersection, Dn intersection down the and, and uh, an important assumption is give, uh, uh, taken regarding the uh, values, the colors alpha, uh, the spins alpha n and beta n, uh, which is the minimum of the infimum of alpha n and the infimum of beta n is always greater equal to r and it's always greater than uh, zero. So the first thing they did is they showed that the spins uh, is well defined. So to show the, the, the well defined, they, what they did is they rewrite the, the this given from CNDN and WN, which are given the algorithm uh, in the form of 
uh, half spaces. Yeah, they have uh, put in the form of half space. And we know the definition of uh, uh, half space. Uh, so, in order to show it's half space, they, they use the, the property of the inner product. Uh, uh, we call norm of, for example, y n minus z less or equal to norm of x n minus z is a uh, expression in uh, C n. Uh, so, uh, they, we can change this into inner product. In rearranging, we can write uh, C n uh, as this in this case, and B n also, and W n also. So uh, these are these are uh, written in the form of half space, and we know that a half space uh, is uh, closed and convex. Very simple to show that a half space, which is written in the form of uh, set z element of H, such that the inner product of A with Z is less or equal to beta, where A is element of H, A different from zero, and beta element of real number. It is possible to show this is uh, this set is closed and uh, convex. We can take a sequence x n. Uh, in the set, and we have to show that the limit point is included uh, uh, again in the set. To show it is uh, uh, convexity, we take uh, an element, uh, two element x and y, and we show that one minus lambda of x plus lambda y is ele again element of the set, so where lambda is element of the closed interval, zero one. So based on these two definitions, we can show that uh, it is closed and convex uh, uh, set. The next task is to show that uh, this set is, uh, is non empty So it, it shows that it is non empty uh, We have to uh, show that uh, uh, S, there is an element, S is a, a little subset of CN intersection DN intersection uh, WN. So we can prove this from the property of, from the non expansive property of uh, the result point operators uh, shown here. Uh, so we can see that S is a subset of CN intersection uh, DN. So the next task is to show that S is subset of WN. So to show this, we start with uh, W naught. We follow a uh, principle of mathematical induction. So we start with N is equal to zero. If N is equal to zero, from the uh, definition of WN, we see, can see that W naught is the whole H1. So S is subset of uh, H1, which is equal to uh, W naught. So the next task is to assume uh, S is subset of WA. So we know the definition of Xn plus one, which is given here. Uh, so from this, we can see that the, this inequality uh, holds. So uh, we can see that uh, this holds for all the elements of Cn intersection Dn intersection uh, WN. So it follows that from the induction assumption. Uh, and uh, from this fact, we can show that, uh, we can see that S is subset of uh, CN intersection DN intersection WN. Uh, so and it, it is given by the, the inequality. So this, this implies that P is element of WN plus one. So S is uh, a subset of WN plus one. So by induction, we can see that S is a subset of WN for all N greater or equal to zero. We show that uh, the, set, the set CN intersection DN intersection WN is uh, non MPT, closed and convex subset of H1. Therefore, the given algorithm is uh, uh, well defined. So this is a theorem, the main theorem, uh, which says that if the sequence uh, alpha n, beta n, satisfy condition seven, then the sequence xn generated by algorithm 3.1 converges strongly to uh, this uh, projection, the projection of x naught from the Hilbert space h1 to s. So uh, there are three parts of the proof. The first one is to show uh, the norm of xn plus one minus xn goes to zero as n goes to zero. That means we have to show that uh, the uh, sequence xn is uh, uh, the sequence xn is uh, bounded. Uh, and final and later we have to show that the norm of xn uh, the, the, the sequence of the norm of x naught minus xn is increasing. So using the boundedness property and the increasing property, we can. Uh, see the existence of limit, and we, finally we have to show it is, it is uh, the, this uh, sequence uh, converges to zero. So it is we use the properties of the uh, uh, metric projection, metric projection. Uh, so first we ask we relate x dagger is equal to the uh, projection of x naught from the Hilbert space H1 to S. So this shows that x dagger is element of S, which is subset of WN for all n greater equal to zero. 
And so we know that from the definition of WN in the characters, characterization of the metric pro the projection, we can see that Xn is uh, the, this projection, Xn is this projection. So using the, met the definition of metric projection, it is possible to get uh, equation, equation 10. Uh, similarly, since Xn plus one is element of uh, WN and Xn is given by this projection uh, and applying lemma 2.1, we can get this uh, this equation. So from this equation, we can see that the sequence uh, of the norm of x and minus you know, not is uh, increased. We can omit the second, uh, the negative, the negative, uh, the expression under the negative because if it is less than, if the, the, the right hand side is less than, the uh, left hand side is less than the right hand side, we can, uh, it's also less than the norm of x n plus one minus x n squared is less or equal to norm of x n plus one minus x naught. So this will show us that it is the sequence is uh, the sequence is uh, increasing sequence, just an increasing. So, or we can rewrite uh, in the form of norm of x n plus one minus x n square is less or equal to norm of x naught minus x n plus one square minus norm of x naught minus x n the whole square. So we can see that we can omit then the expression the, the other the negative from the negative side. Then uh, we can see that the uh, sequence is an increasing uh, space. So we have seen it is bounded uh, in, by using equation ten, and we have uh, from from eleven we have we have shown it's increasing. Therefore, the limit exists. And again, using uh, equation eleven, taking the, the since the limit exists, we can take the limit of both sides uh, to get the limit of norm of x n plus one minus x n as n goes to infinity uh, is equal to zero. The next task is to show that the norm of xn minus yn goes to zero and the norm of zn minus 2yn uh, goes to zero. This is, uh, will be helpful for later in step three. We'll see uh, to show that the uh, uh, norm of the uh, uh, taking a subsequence x and k, uh, we, can, we can show that the, uh, the difference of x and k minus the resolvent operator uh, goes to uh, zero. It will help us to show that uh, uh, the uh, given uh, sequence converges to the fixed point of uh, the uh, operator. So uh, we start with uh, x n plus one, the definition of x n plus one, and we know uh, uh, since x n plus one is element of the intersection of c n, d n, and w n, then it is also element of uh, and applying the definition of CN, we can get the, the expression here. Uh, and taking the limit and applying the previous result about the limit of norm of Xn plus one minus Xn as n goes to, which is zero, we can see that the norm of Xn plus one minus Yn goes to uh, zero. Then applying triangle inequality and uh, taking the limit of both sides, we can see that the norm of Xn minus Yn and it goes to uh, zero which is with the first part of step two. To show the second part of step two, we uh, consider Xn plus one, which is the element of Cn intersection Dn, intersection Wn, again, which is the element of Dn, which is the element of Dn. Then apply the definition of Dn, uh, we can see that this, uh, this result, and actually we have to apply the property of the norm, which is less or equal to the Cauchy-Schwarz uh, Sh inequality. We can uh, get this one. Uh, and then uh, from this, taking the limit of both sides and applying the previous result, we can show that this limit goes to zero. And applying again uh, triangle inequality uh, and applying the short inequality, then we can get the normal of the n minus 2i and goes to uh, zero. So the third step is to show that xn goes to uh, the projection of x naught onto s as n goes to infinity. To do, to do so, we have to apply the concept of the boundaries of set xn. So since Xn is bounded, we can find a subsequence X and K of Xn such that X and K goes to uh, weekly, converge weekly to X star as K goes to infinity. Since we know that T is a bounded linear operator, we can see that T X and K goes weekly, converge weekly to T X star. Now we can uh, start by uh, looking at uh, uh, the, we know that the norm of, we have shown that the norm of Xn minus Yn it goes to zero. So uh, considering the subspace, we can see the x and k, and taking the uh, definition of yn, the algorithm, uh, we can see that it goes to zero. 
Similarly, we have shown that the norm of uh, the norm of uh, Zn minus Yn uh, goes to zero. Therefore, uh, we can see that the norm of Tynk uh, minus uh, the Z, the definition of Zn is already given in the algorithm. So substituting that, we goes to zero. And applying lemma 2.4, uh, we can see that uh, the expression uh, on the left uh, side, both left sides, goes to zero, which implies that the norm of uh, x and k minus the result one operator of x and k uh, goes to zero, and also the other uh, expression goes to uh, zero. Uh, so uh, now it, we are in a position to apply uh, lemma 2.5. Uh, uh, implies that x is star is a element of the uh, uh, fixed point of the result one operator j, uh, the j of a, and the tx star is element of the fixed point of uh, the result one operator of uh, b. Uh, so x star that is x star is element of uh, a inverse uh, of zero intersection t inverse of because here. Uh, uh, this the last inequality shows that it mean, it, it implies that x n k is the uh, uh, x n k. We know x n k converges weakly to x star. Therefore, we can see that x star is the fixed point of this operator, and t uh, x star is also the fixed point of uh, this uh, the, the other operator here. Therefore, from this it shows that x star is uh, equal element of S. And uh, applying the definition at the beginning, we have said x dagger is simply the projection of x not from the Hilbert space h1 to s, and x star is element of s. So by using lemma 2.2, we can see that uh, the, this expression, the expression uh, follow this one expression follows. Uh, we have here we as last in the expression is comes from equation 10. Equation 10. Therefore, if you if you see uh, the left-hand side expression and the right-hand side expression are the same. Therefore, which means the inequalities, all the inequalities are uh, equalities. It will be uh, equalities. Therefore, we'll have a uh, norm of uh, uh, x naught minus x dagger is the same as x naught minus. So applying the uniqueness of the nearest point x uh, dagger, we can see that x dagger is the same as uh, x star. We also can see, can see that the norm of x and the k minus x naught goes to the norm of x dagger minus x naught. And applying lemma 2.2, we can see that x and k converges to x dagger as k equals to infinity. And you, applying the uniqueness of the limit point uh, or the fixed uh, point, we can see that uh, x n converges to x dagger as n goes to infinity. So this completes the uh, proof of the theorem. Uh, as a corollary, we can take uh, this uh, by uh, removing uh, Zn and uh, removing the set uh, Qn, you can have a uh, uh, corollary. So you can simply prove this uh, by applying, by taking H1 is equal to H2 is equal to H and B is equal to uh, uh, simply zero and T is equal to the identity operator on H. Uh, so uh, this is a corollary. These are the uh, references. Uh, uh, sorry, before that, I want to say about the future work. I want to, since this is uh, someone's work, I want to, uh, I'm just reading uh, about it in the different uh, uh, research articles, and I want to uh, extend the problem, uh, or I can, uh, I can also uh, modify the uh, algorithm, and uh, in the process, I can also try to relax uh, strong uh, assumptions. So this is my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Anybody, do you have any question? Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Solomon, with the nice uh, detailed presentation. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question, then suggestions. Okay. Okay, my question now, 
based on this uh, algorithm you presented, even though it's not your work, how do you think uh, they define the projection onto intersection of those uh, three sets? That is D, C, and Q. Okay. Yeah. You understand the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, um, this, uh, they have presented in the paper uh, how they projected uh, uh, from the, uh, I'm a little bit struggling to understand that one because uh, I'm just starting uh, reading. This is my new area. So already they have uh, discussed on the material, but I, can, I can't give you a very good answer right now. Okay, and, 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 and then secondly, in your picture work, you said you want to extend, probably uh, relax some assumptions or modify. Yes. So from so far now, you've reached the material and review on it. What do you think you can you uh, relax work? Or what do you, how do you think you can modify it? Okay, actually, my what uh, comes to my mind right now is uh, on the uh, modified algorithm. Just, uh, but in the process when we modify the algorithm, uh, we may be forced to take uh, some assumptions or to modify the assumptions. But my first intention is to uh, modify the uh, algorithm because there are different uh, metric projection al uh, algorithms and proxim proximate algorithms. Therefore, either by combining uh, some different algorithms uh, or to, to, together with the one with the mentioned by these uh, authors or coming with a new uh, type of metric hybrid uh, metric uh, hybrid projection uh, type, I may come up with a new type of uh, uh, algorithm. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, I understand you are still thinking about it, but I, 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 I thought by now you should be able to at least since you already, uh, you understand review the paper. You already go through the paper. You can be able to say what well, this is too much, or if I do this, like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, hopefully I will come up with my, uh, new research paper. The next uh, lab seminar. I hopefully present my own uh, research. Okay. Also, as a solutions now, I notice in your presentation there are a lot of it's like you just uh, take some part of the uh, paper as it is you present. Okay. So, so what I want to remind you here is that it's a presentation, you know, mm -hmm. as a practice for, for you to make to be able to be good in your presentation. Normally, presentations you presented uh, bulletins, highlights. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. But uh, uh, instead of simply, since it's someone's work, uh, uh, just I, I don't want to uh, write uh, the uh, in, in a uh, new latex uh, uh, one just to save time. I know the how to prepare a good slide presentation. So in the, hopefully in the next week when I come up with my own work. I will I will prepare a very good uh, slide for presentation. Thank you for the comments. George. Yeah, it's okay. It's your, and also, when you, even though it's not your slide format, it's a way of uh, to do your yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think this is all I have. We can discuss more about it. Yeah. Okay, okay, possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question, comment? Thank you, Shamil, for a good comment. Okay. So uh, next semester, we will have see a good presentation from Solomon. 
Okay, everybody. So please uh, turn on video and we will take a photo together. So Roman, please. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. I'm just. Uh... Your 